Okay, hi guys. So let's look at this question here. Interesting question. It says that n by seventy two is a proper fraction. For how many different values of n would n by seventy two be a terminating decimal? Okay. So now, uh, first let's get first let's get the concept of uh, this uh, terminating decimal. Okay. So what is this terminating decimal? Okay. See, uh, a fraction, any fraction, will be a terminating decimal. Only when denominator, okay, the denominator is of the form two raised to n into some five raised to n. That means it only contains powers of two and five. It only contains powers of two and five, right? Now why I am saying this? Let's say, for example, you put some values here. You can check here. So let's say, for example, three by ten is a, a is a terminating decimal. That means three by ten is what it is point three. Why it is terminating? Because ten ten is what ten is two into five. Okay. For example, seven by forty is a terminating decimal. Obviously, right? Why? Because uh, I can uh, this value I can change it to any terminating part. Why? Because The denominator, when any time it contains any power of two and five, I can always change it to nearest power of ten. Like for example, if you have seven by forty here, what is forty now? So forty is two cube into five. That means I can make it the denominator. I can make it power of ten. That means I can make it thousand. How I can make it thousand? So two cube into five cube is thousand. So I can multiply by five square and five square. Okay, getting it. So we had got seven. We had seven by forty. So I can multiply by five square and five square. So what it is become? So forty into five square becomes thousand, and seven into five square becomes what? It becomes one seventy five. So again, it is zero point one seven five. Getting it now? So again, it's a terminating decimal. So whenever the whenever the denominator will contain any power of two and five, that can be made in the form of two raised to n into five raised to n. That is in powers of ten. And it can be written written as terminating decimal always, right? So that means for the conclusion is that for terminating decimal, denominator must be in the form of some two raised to x into five raised to y. Okay, n and n not need to be same. X and y can do different actually, right? But the thing is that it should contain powers of two and five. So now, obviously, so what is seventy-two here? So n by seventy-two, if I observe, it is two cube into three square. Okay. So obviously, uh, this uh, n should not be three square, है ना? So if I want n to be a uh, this uh, terminating terminating decimal, that means n should cancel three square. Okay. Such so that only, for example, only one by eight is left. So one by eight is terminating because I can change it to nearest power of ten. No, how? See, one. What is one by eight? So one by eight is one by two cube. So that means I can change into nearest power of ten. That is by multiplying by five cube here, है ना? That becomes what? That becomes five cube by thousand. That becomes zero point one two five. Getting it? So always, even if it contains as contains power of two, I can convert it to power of five and make it uh, power of ten. Okay. So two raised to x and five raised to y needs to be there. Any one of them can can be absent. That means two can be power. Like for example, here two cube is there, but power of five is not there. That's fine. But either two or five or both should be there. Okay. So n basically. So if n will cancel three is square. So if n will cancel three is square. Okay. Then it will become a terminating decimal. Okay. Now what are the values of n here? So you can say that. Okay, the value of n can be n can be uh, n has to cancel three square. That means three square is equal to nine. So n can be any multiple of nine. So n can be nine. N can be eighteen. N can be twenty-seven like that. Hana. For example, if n equal to eighteen, what will happen? Eighteen by two cube into three square. This will cancel two times. It becomes one by four, and one by four is a Terminating decimal, terminating decimal, right? One point two five. That that's a funda. Okay. 
So basically, uh, n can take all these values. N can be any multiple of nine, so that it cancels three square. So it can be nine up to where up to it can be till sixty three. It can be there, right? Because why? Because why can't be seventy two? Why can't be eighty one? Because at seventy two and eighty one, it it will not be a proper fraction. Proper fraction means numerator must be less than denominator, right? So till sixty three, because be below we have seventy two here. So till sixty three. We can take the n can take the values and it it is a proper fraction, right? So what is my answer? My answer is seven values, nine, eighteen. So nine into one till nine into seven, we have got seven values is the answer for this question. So hope you got the uh, good all the funda behind this question, right? Okay. Okay, let's look at the next question here. This question says that x raised to four minus x is same as the last digit of X raised to five minus x. If x is a natural number from one to twenty-five, how many values x can take? Okay, so try this question for five minutes. Uh, pause this video. Okay, and then see the uh, way, I'm, way I'm solving it. Right. So look at this here. So x raised uh, now understand this part here. Just let's try to analyze this part. X raised to five minus x. So what I know here is basically the cyclicity for last digit or cyclicity for Last digit or unit digit is always four, right? Is four for every number is maximum four. For example, for zero, one, five, and six, its cyclicity is one. For four and nine, its cyclicity is two. For um, uh, two, three, seven, and eight, its cyclicity is four, right? So four is the LCM of all these three. That means every number has to repeat after. Power four. So can I say that? So if every number has to be at power four, so can I say that if x raised to five has got last digit as t, then x also should contain last digit as t because uh, it happens after power of four. Correct. I told that at power of four, or oh, every digit will repeat. Every digit last uh, for every power last digit will repeat. For example, if we have two raised to one is two. Then after power four, two raised to five is also ending in two. If we have seven raised to one is seven, then after power four, that is seven raised to five is also ending in seven. Correct. So similarly, if x raised to five, if if x is ending in t, so after power four, x raised to five should also end in t. So if if it also ends in t here, so can I say that x raised to five minus x, uh, its last digit here is also t. Okay. And its last digit here is also t, so that should basically end in zero, right? Yeah. So x raised to minus x raised to five minus x, the last digit should be zero. And similarly, the last digit of x raised to four minus x is also zero. So x raised to four minus x, the last digit is also zero here. Correct. Both are zero. Okay. So it's because it says that last digit is same now. Now understand here. Uh, when it can happen? For example, x can be any number, right? For example, if I take two, so two raised to four minus two, can the last digit be zero? No way, right? Because the cyclicity repeats after power four. If it is two raised to one, this needs to be two raised to five, not two raised to four. Basically, that means that uh, when we'll have this kind of thing that x raised to four minus x ends in zero, will it happen at something like uh, the, like nine? So nine raised to four minus nine will never end in zero, right? Not not end in zero. So basically, it is only possible that x raised to four minus x ends in zero. It's only possible for the number whose cyclicity is one. That means whose last digit is basically one. Ah, sorry, whose power uh, is basically um, repeats after every uh, same number. For example. So x raised to four minus x will end in zero, right? Now, when it is possible, so it is basically possible only for those uh, numbers whose cyclicity is one, right? For the unit digit, that is, for numbers ending in zero, one, five, six. If a number ends in zero, for example, if we have something zero raised to four minus zero, it ends in zero. If we have something like anything one raised to four minus one, it again ends in zero because one raised to four will always end in one. 
if we have something like 5 raised to 4 minus 5, I am replicating, I'm replicating x raised to 4 minus x here. So 5 raised to 4 minus 5 is also ending in 0 and 6 raised to 4 again. So 6 raised to 4 will always end in 6. Any power of 6 will always end in 6. So 6 raised to 4 will always end in 6 and 6 minus 6 will always end in 0. 5 raised to power 4 will always end in 5 and 5 minus 5 is 0. Right. So basically, it, uh, it, basically uh, what, what I got from here is that x should have last digit as 0, 1, 5 or 6. So 0, 1, 5, 6 should be the last digit of x. Okay. So 0, 1, 5, 6 should be the last digit of x. So now if x is a natural number from 1 to 25, so how many values it can take? So x can take all the values from, for example, uh, 1, natural number, so I can't start with 0, 1, 5, 6, then ending in 0, I can take 10, then ending in 1, I can take 11, then ending in 5, I can take 15, then ending in uh, 6, I can take 16, then again ending in 0, I can take 20, then ending in 1, 21, and ending in 5, 25. Okay, so that many numbers are possible. How many numbers? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So x can take 10 values. So 10 values is the answer for this question, right? So a slightly tricky question. Uh, you got to understand this uh, use of this unit digit here. Okay, and you can easily then solve this question. 10 is the answer. Okay, thank you.